So I'm here to talk to you about what it means from my perspective as a director of theater to work at disciplinary boundaries. What it means to be creative and why both crossing disciplinary boundaries and being creative are essential to research in the 21st century. And what I have to say emerges from my research as a creative artist, although you'll see that I had some uh, very unusual collaborators. So, <laughs> first things first, I am a theater person, okay? So this is what I identify with. I identify with being on a stage and in front of people. And um, I engage with theater as an aesthetic as a performance, and um, I also engage with some cultural criticism, going all the way back to Plato, who tells us that theater is basically a pack of lies and has no place in a thinking society. He tells us theaters are liars. They're deceivers. They're magicians. They are conjurers. They play confidence tricks. No, they're tricksters. <laughs> Teller of tales. And I identify with all of these things. And I also, to give you just a little more background on me and what I do, I use very, very, very old technology. Oh, very old technology. So this theater is almost 3,000 years old. Very, very old technology. So this is a cave painting that um, is tens of thousands of years old, uh, depicting a theater event. So, why am I here speaking to you? I have to remember. <laughs> uh, you all are part of Seagrid, which is a broker of scientific information which works with resource managers, business communities, and other stakeholders to provide and apply the best science available, which as a professional collaborator, that tells me that you all are professional collaborators as well. So this idea of collaboration is what brings me here. And I happen to collaborate with actors. Oh, more actors, more actors, and this is what they do. I might collaborate with choreographers, managers, designers, puppeteers and puppet makers and playwrights, some of whom are largely uncommunicative. <laughs> In 2011, I started collaborating with these people. These are scientists, not artists in my own field. What? <laughs> so, in 2009, uh, we started talking about climate change at ODU, and I mentioned to our director of research that I was really interested in participating, and this is the response I got. What? <laughs> but, she said, art versus science, right? So this is what we're really brought up to think about in the way our universities are designed today that art and science have nothing to do with each other and are actually at odds with one another. So two things happened for me in 2011. I created Science Alliance Live, which is a production company that takes the liveness of theater and the idea of collaborating with audiences to create human experiences around science. So we made two shows about scientific research that connected the research of scientists at ODU with, as um, the vocabulary I'm learning from you all today, with end users, with the people who are going to be affected in the next 50 years in Norfolk um, by climate change. I also created, uh, with Holly Gaff, um, iClub. The, uh, the acronym doesn't matter because we've expanded beyond it anyway, but the idea behind it is that we take the tools that actors use to learn how to collaborate to groups of interdisciplinary scientists or scientists who are working with industry, scientists who are working with politicians, scientists who are working outside of their comfort zones, their disciplinary areas. So, <coughs> why am I doing this? 
Why am I so interested in this collaboration in science? And for me, it goes all, it goes right back to my discipline, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about. Even if there's a single actor on stage, there is a collaboration between the actor and the audience. If there's no collaboration, we don't have theater. So we really define ourselves by this collaboration. It's the most important thing in our discipline. So we have made overt training in collaboration and in communication part of our field. So it's what we spend a lot of time talking about and thinking about is this process of connection and collaboration. So yes, I'm a liar, I'm a magician, I'm a teller of tales, I fabricate alternate realities, and all of that is really fun. But what I really am is a collaborator. And as a professional collaborator, I know that collaboration has to be creative and risky, and that the most fruitful collaborations for me do this. They cross boundaries. So, this is scary, because you know what? It risks this. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> These collaborations that cross boundaries risk this, and they require this vulnerability, and that does not feel comfortable being totally naked with a dragon. <laughs> so this is what we are always encouraging actors to do, is to open themselves up, and it's hard for me after doing this for 30 years, and really connect with the people in the audience. Can I really communicate and connect? Can we have a collaboration in this talk, even though up here I feel a little, a lot, like this. <laughs> So, to put it another way, or a backwards way, and in theater we're allowed to think backwards, vulnerability risks this to come to this. So, noted uh, social worker, Renee Brown, and she has a great TED Talk, if you have a chance to see it, says that vulnerability is the core, the heart, and the center of meaningful human experiences. And I think it's obvious in theater, film, television, that our discipline is built around building meaningful human experiences. That's my area of research. How do we do it well? The more I work with scientists, the more I understand that these meaningful human experiences are just as important in scientific research as they are in the arts. I have spent the last three years um, presenting workshops created to support scientists as they forge collaborations across disciplines. And what I've discovered is a group of people who are really, really, really hungry for connection. So the connection in their research and working across disciplines and working across sectors needs attention. It needs thought about the connection and the human experience of that connection. So part of what I've been doing in my work is to help scientists think about that. Um, so Renee Brown says something that I think is informative to us in terms of, okay, why are we not paying attention to these, these connections? And she thinks it has to do with our whole society. She says, we have come to the point where rather than respecting and appreciating the courage and daring behind vulnerability, going to fight that dragon completely naked, when we let our fear and discomfort become judgment and criticism. So has anyone here experienced judgment and criticism in your work? One or two of you? Yeah. So let me tell you, um, <laughs> four or five or six of you. So um, I think sometimes when we think about artists, um, in our society, we think that um, they, they do it because they are not engaged in judgment and criticism, right? It's soft, right? So let me tell you what the life of an actor is like. An actor's, <laughs> an actor's job is to walk around a large city, generally New York or LA, with a picture of themselves and their resume see, uh, sequel to the back. And um, they have five minutes to show their very best work in order to get a job that does not pay very much and requires them to work nights and weekends. <laughs> and what happens? And a lot of training, a lot of training. So what we expect, what we're training our actors to do at ODU in our acting program is to go out there, become as emotionally naked as they can be, and perform 
those two monologues and connect with this audience of auditors who are sitting behind a table going, <laughs> and what happens 99% of the time is before they even open their mouths, someone says, thank you, because they don't look right, or they're too tall, or that first word just didn't turn the key for the people watching. So my thought is, if we, <laughs> if we have a whole profession of people who can open themselves up and be vulnerable in this way when this, this is their everyday life. I think we can bring some of that to our work as interdisciplinary researchers. So, speaking of judgment and criticism, here's what the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine has to say, and this is in their um, publication, Facilitating Interdisciplinary Research. So they think it's important what they say, Despite the apparent benefits of IDR, interdisciplinary research, researchers interested in pursuing it often face daunting obstacles and disincentives. Some of them take the form of poor personal communication or culture barriers, and others are related to the tradition in academic institutions of organizing research and teaching activities by discipline-based departments a tradition that is commonly mirrored in funding organizations, professional societies, and journals. So this makes this all about risking this. Okay, and this, this disapproval comes in the form of dismissive letters from promotion and tenure committees, funding agencies, and journals. And yet, as we all know, national funders are increasingly calling for us to cross disciplines, right? So I'm going to read just a call from the National Science Foundation who says, a sustainable world in which human needs are met equitably and without sacrificing the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Meeting this formidable challenge requires a substantial increase in our understanding of the integrated system of society, the natural world, and the alterations humans bring to Earth. NSF's, um, and it tells us our, our program aims to address this need through support for interdisciplinary research and education. So they are asking us, they are begging us for some vulnerability, to put ourselves at risk, to go completely naked and partner with someone whose discipline we don't understand. Now this is the state in which the best actors cultivate their performances, and I think it's also the state where the best scientists cultivate their performances of science. It's what allows actors to make connections and to collaborate with their audiences. So in our training, in our training of theater people, how do we get them to go to this very uncomfortable place of being vulnerable in front of others? And for us doing interdisciplinary research, some of that vulnerability is about saying, I don't know, about saying, I don't understand the word you just said, about saying, gosh, I don't have any money, you got some, right? That we have to enter into this idea of vulnerability and honesty. So, we want to go through vulnerability to connection, and unlike these ladies, we want our connections to last, right? <laughs> All right, so a little bit on awkward, because I'm going to talk about this a lot. So. Um, when I first started doing these workshops um, a couple years ago, um, people said, uh, yeah, that felt random. I don't want to do that. And then people started saying, it feels weird. And I didn't know what to do with that either. And then people started saying, that was really awkward. Now this is the form of this where I make them stand like this close from one another, right? Yeah. And um, so I was like, wow, I guess the like, cultural use of this feeling um, this word, this, the cultural word for, I don't know what it feels like has changed from uh, random to weird to awkward. And then I decided, no, 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 what's happening is I'm getting really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> because awkward is something that we really, really value in the theater. So awkward is what leads us to the discussion of what we don't know. So in the case of this sort of finger collaboration, what we don't know is how to collaborate with the person in front of us. And so after we do this, we can begin to discuss this. Oh, I noticed that you really favor going left over going right, so I followed along with that, right? So we, have, we can begin to talk about the collaboration and the kinds of things that are important to collaboration. Who's leading when? 
right? And especially if we're working across disciplines, sometimes it has to be the social scientist, and sometimes it has to be the natural scientist, and, and occasionally it's the artist. But, um, so, um, so I'm trained as a theater director, and this basically means that anytime I gather a group of people together, uh, what happens is I have six or 16 or 25 people who have probably never met each other, and in six weeks, we have to have a finished product. <laughs> so it's not soft. We are actually going to have an audience. There is a deadline. There's no, um, what's it called for the NSF to ask for another year? No cost extension. We do not get no cost extensions. <laughs> And I bring that up because I think that um, sometimes uh, the perception is that thinking about collaboration wastes time. I assure you, we do not waste time. So thinking about collaboration in the long run is going to save us um, time. So um, the other thing is we emerge <clears throat> with a living script that is a smooth performance, right? So it is um, not so good if Maria von Trapp is singing Edelweiss and she falls down the stairs, right? So we have our way of doing things that makes things smooth. But if you can think back to all the television, all the theater, all the film you've ever seen, I'm sure that you have seen films and TV shows and um, productions that are so smooth that they're dead and boring, yeah? So what do we say? Movie critics say, oh gosh, there was no chemistry. So my job as a director during the rehearsal process, once we get through so we do the awkward, and then we do a lot of rehearsal making things perfect, and then my job is to reintroduce vulnerable and awkward into the process. And the question that I have for you, and it's a real question, is if science is, interdisciplinary research science is about connections between scientists, how are we making sure that those connections are hot and alive and moving us towards creativity? <clears throat> So, all right, I like this cartoon. Um, so here I'm gonna hire someone else to tell you all the awkward things about me, right? So, so I don't actually have to share them. And what's interesting about this is if we are comfortable, if we're this person who refuses to go here, right, who refuses to be the person who's engaged in awkward and vulnerable, we're gonna follow the same patterns over and over again. We're never gonna to get to something new, right? And this is our point here. We need to get to something new. We've got big problems to solve, and we know we have to cross disciplines to do those, to solve those big problems. We've got climate change, we've got pollution, we've got public health issues, we've got all sorts of things, and it's our responsibility to engage in a multitude of ways. And my argument is that we have to make sure that we're keeping those connections hot, that we're allowing ourselves to be vulnerable so that we don't go into this blindness of this perfect thing, this perfect slick thing that we're presenting to the world in our work. So, that brings us to the idea of creativity. And I, all, I know that you all value this if, in a somewhat different way than I do. But I want to talk a little bit about how we think about creativity in theater. First of all, we think it grows out of vulnerability, out of putting ourselves in a place where we are actually not comfortable. We also don't think it's this. So we don't think that God or goddess or the universe comes down and kisses certain people with this life of creativity. We don't believe that. We actually think it's more like this. So this is a group of people working together to create an object. So uh, this group of puppeteers all became experts in their piece. This is an atheist art. Uh, their, their piece of the atheosaur, and then the big moment where the audience drew in their breath and applauded was when they came together and made it come alive. And so I'm going to argue that as we're thinking about our creative research across disciplines, yeah, all of our disciplines are really important, but the most important part, the most awe-inspiring part, is when they all come together and make a whole. And we can't, any one of that, us do that on our own, it requires group creativity, what we uh, call in the theater an ensemble, a group that comes together, and the individuals are all really good at listening to what everyone else is doing, 
and fitting in, right? So we fit in with what everyone else is doing, but we're also listening for that time when it's time for us to take focus as an individual. So time for the I to move, time for the blooper to move. All right, sure. Some of creativity is this, right? This lone person on stage, <laughs> as I am right now, thank you all so much. Um, thinking and waiting for this, uh, this spark, but really it's more like this, a group coming together and trying to figure out what to do and sharing leadership. Sometimes this is really important, but this here is the most important, right? So our collaborations get bigger and bigger and bigger, and the best collaborations are inviting more people in. And I think particularly of Seagrant and what you all are doing, it's so important here that we're going from the research scientists all the way to this, this outcome that really involves the public. So how does the collaboration go all of the way? I think one thing that we need to, um, I'll get to that. So um, creativity is an ensemble activity. So I'm underlining ensemble here. Creativity is also not this. It is not happening in our brains. That's not where it's happening. Where it's happening is in our activities. So what are we doing? Are we creating an object around which we can be creative? I teach very young actors. And they all, every time, want to talk first, make it perfect, and then do it. Guess what? They have no it to talk about. So we go in circles and circles and circles and circles. So we actually have to do something so that we have something to talk about. So we're going to practice that now. So everybody has a piece of paper and a pen. And with your group, you just need one of those pieces of paper. So decide uh, on a piece of paper which piece of paper you're going to use with your group of people. And decide also who is A, who is B, and who is C. So B, you are going to draw a line on your piece of paper. Just one line with your marker. And then you're going to give the, mark, 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 give the, mark, the, sorry, the paper to the next person, and they're going to add a line to your line. So you're going to go back and forth until there's at least 10 lines on your piece of paper. The lines do not have to be straight. 10 lines. 10 lines. 10 lines of any sort. Oh, You have your object. lot more attention to this, as much attention perhaps as we pay to this in my field, as much attention as we pay to this, and this, and this. So, how do we create an environment where people are willing to take risks to be vulnerable, to be creative, to engage with other people, to bring these really important disciplines. Disciplines are important. I love my discipline, but it's, only, it's not important all by itself. It has to connect. So how do we as leaders, and, and I mean we, all of us are leaders, all of us engage. And we all, through our behavior, create the environment for interdisciplinary research. So. What is the environment? What's the perfect environment for us to engage with each other, to take risks, to be creative, to bring our individual disciplines to research? So, I have some suggestions. Is it this? How about that? Maybe that. This one? Nice, nice, isn't it? This one. No? This is my favorite one, the indoors outside. Those are all really nice places. My argument though, while aesthetic is important and keep in mind, I put myself right there in terms of embracing aesthetic as an important part of the human experience. 
When I'm talking about environment and interdisciplinary collaboration, what I'm asking about is how are you creating a felt human experience? What is the felt environment that you are creating as you engage in interdisciplinary research? So, this is the very, very first exercise for the very, very first class of actors in any university. And it's an improvisation exercise. So you have your object, you have your beautiful object that you made, that you made creatively. Um, and uh, what you're going to do with your group, we'll, we'll start with A and then B, C, D. A, you're going to put forth a suggestion. And B, you are going to, uh, of what this is and what you guys can do with it, all right? Make it up. Everything you do will be perfect. So A, you're going to put forth a suggestion. B, you're going to say, no, but. And think of a reason why that suggestion is a bad idea. And then come up with your own suggestion. And C, or we'll go back to A, we'll say no, but. And come up with a reason why that's a really bad idea. All right? So try that. No, but. <laughs> And then yes and is going to come from the air. So you have this, you have this object that you're working with. Um, so your objective, yes, you have this object that you're working with. Your objective is to study it from the point of view of your discipline. But you're going to build on the other person's discipline. So I know it's really hard. Make it up. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Yay! Anything else? Designed it. Wait a minute. You made the corporation up here? What? 
started selling things. We started selling things when we were That is awesome. That is awesome. I, I get residuals, right? <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, the difference from the perspective of my discipline between no but and yes and is this. It's going to take some much, much stronger, better listening and engagement skills. So, you had practice in engaging the awkward moment. I forgot what that was. <laughs> Saying yes and. Um, these are all rehearsal techniques. This is all a rehearsal and a metaphor for thinking about what does it mean from perspective of your discipline to take risks, cross disciplinary boundaries, and be creative with one another so that we are engaging in those problems that C Grant has set aside as its particular place to do this work. Thank you all so much.